Hello to all, and welcome back to Should You Get. I'm Brother Templar, and welcome back to War Thunder Aviation as we look at the BF 109G2 Tropical. Now, this was actually an aircraft suggested by one of you, and was an aircraft I was actually going to do probably a couple of months now, but I thought against it at the last second and actually went for the uh, Spitfire Mark 9, I believe. But, regardless of that, uh, it was suggested and I thought I'd give it a second go, and indeed the clips I got on this were a lot of fun to have, and really, coming in at a 4.3 battle rating and a tier 3 aircraft, for its tier and battle rating, this thing is amazing and a real lot of fun. But before we get into this aircraft and whether you should get it or not, let's have a look at the history and see what made this aircraft what it was. In late March 1933, the Reichsstuft Art Ministerium, or Reich Aviation Ministry, published tactical requirements for a single seater fighter. This fighter would need to have a top speed of 250 miles an hour at 6,000 meters, and to be able to maintain said altitude and speed for at least 20 minutes while having a total flight time duration of 90 minutes. The aircraft had to also reach the altitude of 6,000 meters in no more than 17 minutes, and have an operational ceiling of 10,000 meters. The power was to be provided by the new Junkers Jumbo 210 engine, which is about 700 horsepower, and was allowed to be armed with either a single 20mm engine-mounted cannon, or two engine cowl-mounted 7.92mm machine guns. Design work on Messerschmitt Project Number P dot one zero three four began in march nineteen thirty four a basic mock-up was completed by may and a more detailed mock-up was completed and ready by january nineteen thirty five the first prototype versatfiogziak or version one was completed by may nineteen thirty five however the german engines were not yet ready for the design and, ironically enough, it was actually powered by a Rolls-Royce Kestrel 6 engine. The V-1 made its maiden flight at the end of May 1935. However, of the same year, the new jumbo engines were available, so the next variant, the V-2, was completed in October using the jumbo 210A engines with 600 horsepower. The V-3 shortly followed, and was to be the first with actual mounted guns. However, it did not fly until May 1936, due to delays in procuring another Jumbo 210 engine. After the Luftwaffe acceptance trials were completed, the 109 was moved to a seacoast facility in order for it to go to head-to-head -head portions of its completion tests. These head-to-head -head competitions was basically it being compared to other aircraft being made of the same time, and to see which ones were the best design and best for the Luftwaffe. It went up against such aircraft as the Arado AR-80, the Fokkerwolf 159, and the Heinkel 112. Due to its smaller and lighter airframe, the BF-109 was around 20 miles an hour faster than the Heinkel 112 in level flight, and superior in climbing and diving to it as well. In the end, the 109 actually won the competition, due to the test pilot's demonstration of the 109's capabilities during spins, dives, flick rolls, and tight turns. On the 12th of March, it was announced that the results of the competition in a document entitled BF-109 Priority Procurement, which ordered the BF-9 into production, and meant that, well, as I've already said, the BF-109 won the competition. 
However, at the same time, the Heinkel was told to radically redesign its current design, the 112, and the 112 did eventually see production and combat. However, that's another aircraft for another day. The Messerschmitt 109 made its public debut during the 1936 Berlin Olympics when the V1 prototype was flown. The first BF-109 in serial production was the BF-109B1. This was fitted with the 661 horsepower Jumbo 210D engine with a two-blade fixed-pitch propeller. It saw its first combat in, during the Spanish Civil War, although it was apparent even at that time that its armament was very inadequate, with only two 7.92mm machine guns. The next BF-109 was the 109C, which began production in spring of 1938. It was powered by the 690 horsepower Jumbo 210G engines, and had two more machine guns, offering four 7.92mm machine guns in total. Only 58 BF-109Cs of any versions, because it did have many, were built by Messerschmitt, as they were far too interested in changing to the next variant of the 109s. The BF-109D was a standard version of the 109 in the Luftwaffe before the start of World War II. However, it only saw limited service during the war, and only 239 109Ds were even around for the beginning of the Poland campaign, and were rapidly taken out of service to be replaced by the BF-109Es. The E-1s kept only two 7.92mm machine guns, however, they were changed to the E-3 variant later on. Now, the E-1 was the first fighter to become a fighter bomber, and they were fitted with a bomb racks capable of carrying one 250kg bomb, or four 50kg bombs. The next major variant was the 109E3. The E3 was armed with, of course, two 7.92mm machine guns. However, it did also have one MGFF cannon in each wing. A total of 1,276 E3s were actually built. Next was the E4, which had some differences to the E3, most notably, the using of a modified 20mm, the MGFFM wing cannon, which allowed the firing of the new explosive shell known as the Meinschlop, or Mine Shell. The E7 was the next major variant, and saw combat during the end of August 1940 and beyond. This new design allowed a Luftwaffe 300-litre capacity drop tank, which of course increased the range of the aircraft. Alternatively, bombs could also be fitted, and all in all, 438 E7s were built. The next major variants were the F-series. Now, the F-0s, 1s, and 2s all had the 1,139 horsepower DB601N engines. All of these variants were fitted with one 20mm FGFFM firing through the engine hub with 60 rounds. The F3 only had a slightly more powerful engine than the F variants before it, and it wasn't until the F4 and onwards that they used the new 20mm Mauser MG151 with 200 rounds. The F4 first found itself in the front lines in June 1941, and production lasted exactly a year from May 1941 to May 1942, all in all, 1,841 F-4s were produced. 
And finally, the G variant, or Gustav variants. Now, the G1 was produced from February 1942 and was the first production version of the 109s, which had a pressurised cockpit. And last, but by no means least, the G2. Now, the G2 started production in May 1942 and lacked cabin pressurisation that the G1 had. Regardless of this, its performance was near identical to the G1s, and all in all, they were pretty much identical in almost every respect. However, the G2 did have some side variants. The R1 variant was a long-range fighter bomber, which could hold up to 500 kilograms of explosives, or a 300-litre drop tank. However, the R2 variant was a reconnaissance aircraft with the GM-1 and camera equipment. All in all, 1,586 G2s were made between May 1942 and February 1943. And there you have it, the mostly complete, well, complete amount of history for what you really need to know about this aircraft, from the V1 all the way to the G2. And, one last note, it's important to say that the 109 is the most produced fighter ever, with 33,984 numbers built altogether. Phew, that was a long history lesson, even for my videos. But either way, if you're still here, then you're probably interested to see how well this 109 plays a game, and well, how well it is at destroying other aircraft. And indeed, this is quite a fun little fighter that I will go into now. So, the BF 109 G2 Tropical sits at a battle rating of 4.3. Now, its max speed is 424 miles an hour, and with 23.2 meters per second climb rate, you're easily one of the fastest aircraft you're going to come up against. I mean, for a 4.3 battle rating, 424 miles an hour is easily faster than most, if not everything, you'll come up against, and with 23.2 meters per second climb rate, once again, one of the fastest, if not the fastest, you're going to come up against. So, with a stack card like that, you're probably thinking to yourself, how the hell is this aircraft a 4.3 battle rating? And, well, I make it seem a bit better than it actually is. You see, this aircraft does have a few disadvantages, the main one of which being that it only has two 7.92mm MG-17 machine guns and one 20mm MG-151 cannon. However, this problem can actually be resolved by equipping the two 20mm cannons to the wings, which of course brings your firepower up to three 20mm and two 7.92mm, but then again, that is at the cost of your maximum speed, your turn time, and your rate of climb. Meaning that, well, it's very much an exchange for a lot of guns for a lot less abilities in combat. And indeed, one of the few advantages this aircraft offers, as there aren't actually that many, is its amazing climb rate and max speed. And as soon as you start taking those things away, the aircraft starts to lose its value. Personally, I haven't found much use for the extra 20mm, as I find the maneuverability and maximum speed to be more to my personal style of play. However, I can completely see why people do choose them, and how they could be a great asset to you, especially when going for large aircraft, such as your bombers and heavy fighters. Now, on to turn time, and well, I'd say this aircraft was not particularly amazing at turning, but then again, it does still have a very good turn time, strangely enough. This being that it has 19 meters per second turn time, which although will make you quite easily outturn aircraft like your Typhoons, Tempests, and just about any American aircraft you'll come up against, 
you will find that you will struggle to outturn your standard yaks and spitfires, which basically means that in those instances, you have to use your greater max speed and rate of climb to your advantage. And that's the thing with the 109, is that it doesn't really specialise in any area. You see, when flying a 109, I found it much better to try and play to your enemy's disadvantage rather than trying to play to your advantage. Which sounds like a strange thing to say, but hear me out on it and you'll see that I do actually make some sense. You see, the 109 is... well, it's not really good at anything, but it is by no means a jack of all trades. It is kind of okay at everything, but doesn't really specialise. And that very much means that you can't use it as a specialist aircraft. I mean, like in the way that you'd always try and turn fight enemies when in a Spitfire, or you'll always try to boom and zoom when in your P-47. This aircraft is okay at boom and zooming, but isn't amazing. Its energy retention is okay, but not amazing. Its turn time is okay, but not amazing. Its armament is slightly poorer than what you'll come up against, but it is more centralised and more accurate thereby. So, all in all, it's alright, and of course you can get the extra 20mm. And, yeah, just every other part of this aircraft, except for its uh, climb rate and max speed, I would say was just very, very average. Nothing really too much to report, really. So that's why I say play it to your enemy's disadvantage rather than to your advantage, because you don't really hold any predominant advantages. Like what I said, this aircraft isn't a turn fighter and it isn't a boom and zoomer. It's, I mean, not to say it can't do those things, it very much can, but it's not, that's not where it specialises in, as it doesn't specialise anywhere. So as you can see, when I'm flying the aircraft, when I see aircraft like Spitfires, I always try to use my speed to my advantage and try to surprise them. And when I use it to fight enemy aircraft like, well, just about any American aircraft in the game, and all heavy fighters in general, I try to force them into turn fights as I know that I can beat them in that area. Which brings us to the question of should it be battle rating 4.3? And honestly, I would have to say no. It is a bit too good for a 4.3, However, I think it would probably be unfair to put it against things like maybe your Tempests and late props. So, I think it would be best to put it at a 4.5, which although is only a small change, it just means that it doesn't have to come up against aircraft that are, well, quite vastly inferior to it, really. And I think that would all in all make it the more, well, more fair all in all, really. Which brings us to the final question of the night, which is, should you get the BF-109 G2? Well, of course, this aircraft is a good lot of fun, and as you can see, on this game I'm on four kills right now, and, well, the game's about to heat up a bit, but uh, I'll leave that for a moment. But yes, I definitely say that you should get the BF-109 G2 and very much enjoy it, but also remember that you're not amazing in any area, so always play to your enemy's disadvantages than to your own advantages. So, as you just saw, there is an aircraft in the sky over A, and I was originally going to land on A, but I notice him, and of course I have to go back to the base if I want to land. I'm a bit low on ammunition, it's not really going to uh, be able to kill two aircraft. So I'm just flying away now, hopefully I can make the base in time. Ah, it's a P-51. Right, so I've just got to keep running, and running and running, but he is slowly, he, yeah, he's slowly gaining on me, so I need to think of something and fast. So I, I think of a bit of wit, a bit of the old cunning, and I notice, just as I go past this in cave here, I notice that these little in caves are here, and in the side of this uh, mountain sort of hill, so I come up with a genius idea, and it's very risky, but I'm going to go for it. So I cut in here, go out of his line of sight, then I bring myself up, and go through this gap here, he's there, I roll, take a clip, but inevitably I stopped most of his uh, shells connecting, so that was a very clever manoeuvre on my part. 
So at this moment in time, he has the energy advantage, and instead of just flying away and booming zooming me, he chooses to instead try and turn fight me. So I go under his guns again, and I just keep turning. Why not? Because I'm more maneuverable than him. So as long as he keeps doing this, he's just playing to my advantages. And there he goes, gets in front of my guns, foolishly. I take him out, that's five kills, that's my ace. Very nice. So yeah, in conclusion, if you've got more energy than your opponent, don't turn fight them, especially if they're in a more movable aircraft than you. But either way, I go on my base, I land, get back in the sky, there's one enemy left, I have no idea where he is at this point. And uh, there he is. It's a Spitfire. And this is bad and interesting. We are the last men left on both teams. So I fire early, try to scare him off, roll, and then cut under. Now I'm going to go up into the vertical and head back to my own base. Alright, so it's going to go up here, and... Wait, what? Hang on a second. How the hell did that connect? Wait a minute, what's this absolute heresy that I'm seeing here? There's no way he can turn that fast, even for a Spitfire. Even with a Spitfire with landing flaps out, he couldn't turn that quickly. So, a bit salty, and very confused, I head to the replays to see why that just happened, and how I actually died in that engagement, as I can't really see why. So I'm watching from his perspective here, I shoot, doesn't seem to uh, mind him. He turns around, so, yep, that's me. There he pops landing flaps, I go over, he goes up, right, going to turn us right down to slow speed just so we can watch every second of this, and, ah, it appears my flaps fell off my aircraft before he even started opening fire on me, huh, well, yeah, that, that so yeah, as I thought, he was nowhere near me when he firing, and unfortunately I was killed by lag, so... Uh, it doesn't matter how good a pilot you are, when there's lag at play, unfortunately there's very little you can do. But either way, I hope you like what you saw, this was a very long video. Uh, but yes, I hope you like what you saw, um, if you did, make sure to like, comment and subscribe, always appreciated. And until next time, so yeah, thank you very much, and fuck Ganjin and their crappy laggy servers. Ta-ra.